Oh my goodness, we're here. Hello, hello. Waiting for people to jump on. Let's see about inviting friends. Hi everyone, welcome. What's up? Okay, so we're successfully live. Welcome, it's 2 p.m. here in California. Thank you for uh, joining for those where it is not 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, I am gonna work on joining Jeff. Uno momento. Nope, that's the questions panel. Let's use the questions thing. That seems cool and like a possibly an easier way for us to kind of keep track um, as questions start rolling in. Um, Mr. Shine, where are you, good friend? Go live with... Oh, amazing. Look at that. I can search. Okay. Um, oh, wait. He has to be viewing it. He'll be here in a second. Okay, well, in the meantime, hello, everyone. Oh, look at everyone. Hi, guys. It's 5 a.m., not Jill Sandwich. Welcome. Good morning. I'm so glad we could be here to wake you up. We're going to be plenty of energetic so that you feel alive and well to maybe start your day and or, you know, listen for a little bit and then conk back out. We'll try to keep you awake. Jeff is here, everyone. Let's freaking do it. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I got you. I am going to go live with Waiting, waiting. Is that Jeff Shine? Oh, it is. Look at that. Hey. <laughs> How are you? What's up? Oh, What's up, God. kid? How you doing? You know, just hanging out, being yeah. in isolation. Oh, cool. I, this is. I, I, I'm not sure that I'm going to be technically. You're fine. So essentially, you're live now with me. There's 82 people on. Hey, everyone. Can you see the comments kind of scrolling. Do you see comments? Yes. I can yes. see, like, uh, what do we got? People are joining. Yes. Antimos just said, Carlos. How's it going, Jeff? What's up? How are you? There you go. Yeah. So those yeah, are it's on the bottom, right? Yep. That's Guys, on the bottom. bear with me. This is my first Instagram live thing. So everybody up for, give it up for Jeff Shine. He's nailing the social <laughs> media. We're very, very proud of him. Uh, I remember uh, getting on him when we were in Japan and being like, I've taken a really nice photo of you and you need to post it. Here's, here's the photo. You yeah, must Nick, post. Nick was my, uh, <laughs> was my social media guru. Yes. Um, Jeff, there's also, I don't know if you see it, but down at the bottom, there's a little question button with a red notification. Do you see the questions? Maybe I, I just have that. I don't. I don't okay, see great. it. So I have a little question button and we're going to use the question. So if you guys want to ask specific questions because the comments are flying by so quickly, yeah. um, we're going to, I'll, I'll, I'll pull questions from there for us to kind of chat about. Um, and that way we don't miss stuff as you guys all love and talk about it. Um, hello. Hello. Look at everyone joining. So much fun. Uh, so far, we have how are you at animal crossing jeff are you playing anything right now while you're in quarantine uh what am i playing right now yeah i'm playing some stuff i'm playing um, a little bit of um call of duty warfare love it um what else am i playing uh a little bit of apex legends nice and then my wife and i are playing a little bit of categories which oh. is <laughs> which is <laughs> not <laughs> online but but, but i highly good. recommend it Look, we've, I've, I've been playing lots of Animal Crossing, and yes, I think I'm good at it. And um, how can you not be good at Animal Crossing? And then we've also, like, the Scrabble board's been, been hitting it up here um, at, oh, at nice. my house. Where, like, the Scrabble board's been happening. And then Are we've you guys, also... Go ahead. Who's more competitive? Well, okay, so here's the thing. My dad, and, and he's here. We're all just quarantined together. My oh, dad wow. is an English major, and he's, like, very, very, very brilliant and always has the better, you know, words. But, like, you know, yeah. of course, I'm more competitive. <laughs> I want to That's, want that's to my wife. My wife is super competitive. <gasps> Must win. How, how is she doing? Are you guys just, like, hanging yeah. out together? We're doing okay. I mean, like, you know, we're we're... I mean, look, we're, we're both, we're, we're home and staying in and healthy and, good. you know, just doing the best we can. So I think it's, um, we're all right. You good. guys good? Safe yeah. and healthy? Kind of, kind of same. We're healthy. We're inside. We're, we're hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. It looks like we have um, like 13 questions now. So we have a bunch. Cool. Let's fire away. Let's do it. All right. So 
Oh wait, it just, I'm technically, I got this. What was your most favorite parts of working on Resident Evil 3? This was from Ryan. Ryan, um, Yeah, I'll start us out. I mean, obviously just like getting to bring iconic characters that people love um, already to life is always like such a blessing, just like built in having so many people that are excited to play the game that feels so great. And then as far as like making it, we got to go to Japan and that was like a highlight. It was my first time going to Japan at the time. Um, so just the combination of like getting to do what you love and travel um, on a project that people are excited about, it's just the best of all of the worlds. Yeah, no, I would agree, I would agree with that. I mean, for me, I, I mean, every time you start a new project, I'm always excited to, to meet new people. Um, and then I'm always pleasantly surprised when those people turn out to be amazing. So we, I mean, we had a great time, you know, everyone together. And it was my first time in Japan also. Japan's an amazing country. If you get a chance to go, I highly recommend it. Go, definitely. Yeah, for sure. But go with a guide, like, go with a guide though. Find something, no, find a local when you go because you really Jeff like, couldn't get anywhere is what he's saying. Well, only be, I only got anywhere because our guide held my hand the whole time and made sure I was safe. <laughs> Don't get lost. Oh my gosh. Uh, guys, uh, Nick is also on, uh, who voices uh, Leon in RE2 remake. Hey, Nick. Thanks Yo, for what up, Nick? To join. Hey, buddy. You're awesome, man. Um, um, all right, let's see if I can grab something else. Lots of people that love countries. For example, Brazil. We have Poland representing. We got all these cool places. Um, oh, this is for Jeff. That's great. What was the best character you have uh, played as? What's the best Ooh. character you've ever played? That's tough. That's a, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I don't play favorites very much, generally speaking. You know, I will say though, like, uh, and this is not to avoid your question, but um, every character I've been really fortunate has like had a special place for me. Javi was like one of the first kind of like, you know, major roles that I got a chance to participate in. Um, you know, getting to voice Captain America coming up is like very <laughs> special to me. And then, you know, getting to play in Resident Evil's universe. So, so I don't know that I have a favorite. They've all brought a little something different and I've gotten to explore a little bit of a different side of me. So I just feel really lucky to, to have gotten to do what I've done. So I just heard him say Carlos because that's what matters to me. And also he's definitely playing <laughs> Captain America. So I don't know what's going to top that coming up. It's hard to top <laughs> Cap, but. Dude, you're literally Captain America. Get out of here. Um, all right. How did it feel to play as Jill Valentine? Did you like it? Yes. I, how could you not? It was just such a, I mean, she's such a badass. You guys are playing it. It's so much fun. She has so many moments that are like playful and exciting. And anytime you get to bring someone who um, is as resilient, as strong as Jill, at, it, Jill is, um, you're always going to feel pretty great about it. So yes, I mean, total dream, total dream come true. Uh, I feel like there's more people that we know that have like come on to say hello, but these comments are just flying. I know I can't uh, keep up. Oh, I only get like one at a time because my screen is so small. Dude, they're so flying. I'm not trying. I'm not ignoring anybody. I just I can't keep up. Okay, have we played the Resident Evil Three remake yet? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I have not. I'm. I'm ashamed, but I haven't yet. I haven't it's got okay. To. I've watched a lot of it. I have Jay, my boyfriend, played the first little bit, like the day he had it downloaded or whatever. And I was like watching him um, play it. And then I've just decided, like, I'm just, gonna, I just kind of want to wait. I'm really loving just like watching other people play because they're so much better than I am. And I think, I think I'm gonna play pretty soon here, and I might stream it like the first official play. Right, that'd be good. That'd be cool. That'd be or super. something like that. Um, but it looks really hard. I'm gonna be totally honest. It looks terrifying. I've seen some playthroughs. I've watched a bunch of playthroughs, and, yeah. and it definitely seems like, especially uh, like when people are playing the harder modes, it seems Dude, incredibly unforgiving. These like, these, like, inferno modes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I had someone send me that they, they beat the inferno mode, and they got an A rating. I was like, that's impossible. Impressive. You're a robot. <laughs> um, all right. What was the most challenging part of working on RE3? You kicked this one off. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, it, they're pretty physically, de it's a pretty physically demanding, um, you know, project. Anytime you're doing survival horror, like, if you don't come out with a few bumps and bruises, you did it wrong. Um, so we, 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 we definitely were, were super active. Um, 
but we were surrounded by so many great people that just knew what they were doing. Like, it just was like a dream team, the actors, the cast. So, you know, would it be ridiculous to be like, the, the jet lag was quite challenging. But once we overcame that, it was um, just a whole lot of, um, a lot of fun and experimentation and, and playfulness. Yeah, I didn't find set to be, I, I didn't find anything on set to be like too challenging. Mm -mm. in a way that in any way that we didn't overcome like very quickly as a group and i think yeah. that was sort of i think the fact that we were so tight as a group really lent itself to us like problem solving very quickly yeah um i, I guess the only thing that might have been a little bit of a challenge in the beginning but ended up but for me was one of the most exciting parts and ended up kind of creating some really interesting dynamics that i've mentioned this before is you know there was obviously a language barrier between us and the entire crew totally but, so so there was that aspect but there was something about navigating that that really made it um i don't know there was so much like unspoken communication that yeah. it really kind of felt magical in a way so I, I actually loved it i really enjoyed working with the japanese crew totally yeah we, we had several translators um on set but a, a ton of crew didn't speak any hardly any english at all and you know other than arigato gozaimasu that was the limit of uh, my japanese knowledge as well <laughs> so it was a lot of um of really exciting uh, uh, kind of like meeting people in, in a new way in some ways. I, that was my first time being in a setting like that where there was such a, a gap in um, the languages that we spoke. But yeah. it, it just, it kind of melted away after a while. Yeah, I agree. Um, I know Nick just submitted a question, which is super cool. Leon himself is asking, did we have any liberties or influence on lines and deliveries throughout our performances? We, I mean, I, I always like to say, Dick, when starting with a question like that, and uh, also thanks, Nick, for asking. Appreciate that. Um, I think, like, uh, I always think it's important to acknowledge, like, we came in very fortunate with a good script. Like, I really felt like, you know, I mean, I can speak for Carlos, but I, th I think I can speak for Joe as well. Like, those characters were on the page, and that's really a great place to start when you're coming into a project. But... Yeah, I mean, I think as, you know, as Nicole stepped into the role and again, as I stepped into Carlos, I think, you know, each person brings their own personality to it and that's what fleshes out the, sort of the rest of it. That's what brings some of those things to life. And when you've got a director like Steve and a, and a writing crew who's like sort of open to ideas and we're kind of being nimble on set, then yeah, we were given some liberties. I don't think what I was, what I was happy about is I never felt like anybody abused that privilege. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Because it is like it's a it's a privilege to be able to contribute, you know, dialogue and things like that. Anything, so, yeah. I I felt like all all, all yeah. of us actors were were pretty respectful of that, and also, um, you know, we we still were with a team that was really open though. Like working with Steve or whatever else, if we had an idea, or we had a thought, like it was it was it was welcome, and and all of us were just really in the kind of the collaborative experience of that. I yeah. know. Um, sorry, I'm gonna move my camera for a second. I know some of um some of like the banter between jill and carlos we kind of like developed and evolved a little bit once we mm -hmm. got to set there's a couple scenes i've said this before with the with the radio which made it into one of the main trailers and stuff yeah. like, that. like we added stuff on on how he would they kind of talk to each other when he's like here's a radio she's like i know what that is um and and just like found ways to develop and, and make it seem more natural especially because they have such kind of like a cheeky eye winky relationship to each other in some ways um so people are really open to it uh, yeah. but like jeff said a lot of it was on the page and we're already working with just a great um a great setting and a great cast uh speaking of i saw this one fly by uh the, ooh, okay cool there's my window i'm glad you got to see on my window um it was, what was it like working with Neil Nubon as both Nemesis and Nikolai? So we'll give Neil a handy dandy shout out. <laughs> Neil's a great guy. We had a good time. I mean, <laughs> Neil is like, Neil, is, I love Neil. Neil <laughs> is like, um, he's like, like, he's like that machine you put a quarter in and it won't stop. <laughs> all you gotta do is give it a quarter. Yeah, that's it. He's just like, he's on all the time. He's like full of energy. He's always like ready to play. Neil's great. Neil's, Neil, Neil brings a lot to set. You know what I mean? And Dude, a lot of enthusiasm. Sure. And you got to love that about somebody. I mean, somebody who comes to work every day, enthusiastic. Is jazz. Crazy, so. Totally. Um, yes. So big, big love to Neil. He, he's like family at this point. Uh, he, he, he played, played my enemy in, in every scene and we loved it <laughs> because there's nothing like 
facing off with someone who's really intense and definitely he himself will say has resting psycho face, but then is just the most squishy, lovable teddy bear human that you've ever met. So that's an amazing guy full of a lot of talent. I'm sure you'll hear more from him soon because I think at some point we'll, we'll try to get him on and do something. Okay. Um, I'm, there's a lot here, guys. Thank you so much for submitting so many questions. Yeah, so, uh, guys, we'll try to get to everything. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we're gonna- And if we uh, don't, it's the Cole's fault, so. Definitely, blame me. Uh, yes, oh, someone said we killed Neil twice in RE3. <laughs> yes, we did. Oh yeah, which Maybe. doesn't feel like enough. No, yeah, I, I three or four more times. Put me back in, coach. Um, all right. Uh, okay, lots of suggestions. Thank you for all of your amazing Resident Evil suggestions. You can direct those right on over to game developers who have control over when that stuff happens. Oh, I just selected one. Oh, I just now I can see it. Oh, oh, cool. Okay, I'll do that more. Resident That's better. Series before okay. booking the job. All right, I'll read. Did, did you like the Resident Evil series before booking the job? If so, what's your favorite Resident Evil game? And this is from CAC17. Sweet. Um, Nick, what was your? Did you know Resident Evil? Before. I definitely, I definitely knew Resident Evil. I think it's hard to kind of not know it. It's such an iconic series from the movies or the game, like whether or not you're in video game world. But I was familiar with both the games and the movies, um, and just the world and the fan base. I had not myself um, played the original games, though. I definitely just like seen so many like scenes and and it's like very quotable <laughs> franchise um so i'd seen lots of that but i hadn't played myself and um so when i i got the role i definitely went back to just look at um some of the original performances and kind of the expectations of of how we look at these characters mm -hmm. jeff uh, did you know resident evil i knew the series well i mean i, I hadn't played as many of the games but Resident Evil 2 was my favorite. It was the first game. It was the first Resident Evil game I ever played. And obviously the films are, you know, you, you can't miss them. Um, so I was familiar with the universe enough that I felt very comfortable like with the world and understanding what it was about. I just realized this question is sits in front of your face. So while it's great, oh. um, it's just in front of your face. It's just get rid of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just sitting in front of your face. Um, okay, 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 okay. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll click it and then I'll exit out. We're just learning. This is great. Um, here. Uh, we've sort of answered this. Hey there, guys. So for Nicole, how does it feel to pick up the mantle of Jill? And for Jeff, what are your th thoughts on now being Carlos? Hmm. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I'm excited to be a part of the Resident Evil world. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, Carlos is a, was a great character and super fun to play. And I, I mean, genuinely enjoyed every minute of it. So, um, you know, I think anytime you step into a universe as broad as that and as well established, you know, you come in with a bit of responsibility and you want to make sure you're serving that world well. And, and you know, you want to be an integral part of it and you, and you hope you bring something to it. But some of that really isn't up to you. Do you know what I mean? Like you make choices and you come in and you, and you jump head first into it. But then, you know, how you're received and, and how you fit into the puzzle piece of that greater universe is really up to the people who, who, who you know, love that world. And um, totally. so I feel, I feel really happy to be a part of it though. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think I could say it better. Just getting to come, we've had such a warm welcome too. The, the fans mm -hmm. have just been so, you guys have just been so loving. Resident Evil fans are amazing. Just, fan, they're literally, I think you guys might be, might be they're up there so on awesome. the best fan bases. Because it's just like, it's just so, everyone's just enthused. And uh, we feed off of that because we're ex just as excited. Um, yeah, it's great. In so many ways. So, yeah, totally. Uh, uh, there's things here, uh, met several that I think I can wrap up in kind of one about just like what the motion capture experience is like. What's it like to be on a mocap stage? Um Go ahead, you start this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think Nick said they're the best to Resident Evil fans, I think, but probably also <laughs> to mocap stages. The mocap stages are the best. I, I love the, the motion capture experience. It's like such a unique uh, type of performance that requires kind of its own little world of like te technical work. You're working with so much crazy equipment, but at the end of the day, like, 
your professionals and you're working with other professionals and all of that kind of just melts away as soon as you get locked into the scene with good direction and and whatever else so it can be kind of a strange experience maybe the first time you do it but once you get used to it it's like well suit in get all my velcro on and let's like hit the ground running yeah i think you know i think people forget sometimes too that motion capture is, is is also not just exclusive to games i mean in fact most of the films that you love were the last like you know whatever 10 years especially more recently um in a lot of comic book movies you're you're yeah. seeing mocap frequently yeah. frequently frequently and yeah. it's a great blend at, at least as it pertains to video games it's a great blend between uh like theater and film because scenes are shot in long takes you can't cut in between um so you know in that respect it's like a theatrical performance um i, I think mocap is a great medium and it, it especially challenges you as an actor for uh, to really broaden your imagination because sets are usually fairly empty we just have blocked out very basic shapes to, to interact with that are sort of that are accurate to the world um, totally. And then you just kind of get turned loose and you got to go and, and fill yeah. the rest of it. I mean, super fun. It's like really fun for people Great. that love using their imagination. Like it's, it's just full of, full of that. So, um, all right, let's see what else we've got. Uh, Sorry, okay. I, just, I just saw the name Mattitude. That's a great name. <laughs> love it. If you could voice or play any other video game character or a character in general, who would it be? You could kick that one off. No, <laughs> all you. Come on, I, I threw it on you, you gotta go. No, uh, okay. If I could voice, like an, an, an exist, all right, so existing characters, oh my gosh, there's so many great badass female characters that have come into the, into the universe since, I mean, I think Horizon Zero Dawn's super cool. I love Ashley Birch's Aloy. Um, she's amazing. And then as far as like characters that, and then, oh my gosh, Last of Us. God, the, the, the women in that game are just such oh. badasses. They're so freaking great. So I would do something like that in a heartbeat. And then, uh, yeah, as far as characters we, we haven't seen, I don't know, like coming up, man. I love heightened reality. I love survival. I love, um, fantasy aspects i did the lord of the rings game i love kind of that lore um so yeah uh, anything i love it but i, I think that's some a, a couple a couple good answers take those <laughs> <laughs> um i think type wise i just i i'm, I'm interested now in, in playing some um something kind of dark i'd like to play some dark characters um some villains i think um someone with a little bit of an edge uh, so I think that's, hopefully for me, that's that's what's next. I would love to see Jeff as a bad guy. I'm ready for that. I'm a bad guy. I'm ready for, I'm ready for your bad, I've got a bad side. guy. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, quarantine questions. Yes, yeah. we are very stuck inside. <laughs> the yeah. answer is yes. We'll answer quarantine questions. We'll answer life questions. Throw it yeah. out. You guys want advice, love, life, pursuit of happiness? We're here for you. Um, if I can get to them fast enough. This is somewhat of an of intuitive platform, but a little bit difficult, honestly. Um, okay, here's, here's just what people that, uh, there's a bunch that are like a aspirational, people that are aspiring to be voice actors. You yeah. know, how, how do you start learning to, to voice act and, you know, uh, maybe a little bit about our pathway into into this kind of career. Sure. Um, you want me to start? Yeah, start it off. Um, I can tell you what my journey looked like. And the reason I say that in that way is because everybody's journey is a little bit different. There totally. is no mapped out. There's no like roadmap for this thing. Mm -mm. Um, and, you know, I can certainly give general pointers on where to begin and what you might want to start thinking about and looking at. But the first thing I would say is, you know, it should be something you love, truly love, because it's, it's, it's hard and it's hard and rewarding, but it's hard in a way that if you don't love it, you won't enjoy the process and the process, you spend more time in the process than you do in the promised land, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, so, you know, when I first started, I can tell you for me, it was, um, I, you know, I've been doing on camera. Um, <clears throat> and so I had a foundation in acting from that. Um, you know, the world into video games, and animation specifically, which is what most people tend to ask about frequently, usually comes on the heels of having a good commercial read, which doesn't 
always make a lot of sense. But when you start doing voiceover, um, you want to, you know, start developing all aspects of it. So I began um, taking a lot of classes, doing a lot of reading. I would read out loud a lot. I read books, poems, candy wrappers, magazines, anything I could get my hands on, just getting comfortable speaking. Um, you know, read some Edgar Allan Poe and really like challenge yourself with that. You got it on the shelf right over here. Yeah, no, seriously, Shakespeare, just a anything yeah. that's challenging, you know, vocally is, is a great place to begin. I would do, I did breathing classes like Alexander Technique and, yep. um, and then, you know, after that, I, you know, started pushing to record a demo, which is my first commercial demo. But, you know, when you think you should record a demo and when you should is usually a little bit different. Yep. And then that go that demo goes to agencies and hopefully an agency likes you and then you know they bring you in and after a little while you maybe move from commercials to being able to do some animation and some games and um it's a long road but if you if you love it um start start is the best piece of advice start, start. i would agree with that i think uh, you know tagging off of what jeff already said um best quote by the way is uh uh, a, a lot of time in the process and not much in the promised land. Uh, it's, it's, it's so true. Um, it is all about the process. So really falling in love with the process is what you want to do. Um, because what you don't see if you're not doing the thing, you know, you, you see the final products, you see the games, you see the cons, you see all of that sort of stuff. What you don't see is just the hours and hours of, of training and work and auditions and times that we're just sitting at the mic in our home studios, banging pieces out and, and auditioning and um, just putting lots and lots of reads um, out there. And everyone's process and path is so different. Mine's different than Jeff's. I haven't done a lot of commercial stuff. I also still do a ton of film and TV stuff. And um, uh, just had a had a love of vocal performance as someone who's very musical. Um, and so I, I like fell into it in a in a sort of way in that I put in an audition for um, a random voiceover read through a commercial agent who did voiceover, but I didn't do much commercials with them. And I happened to land the Warner Brothers Middle Earth Shadow of War um, video game uh, at, at a pretty young time and and from that i just learned so much and i realized working on that i got to work with some just incredible talents and uh, then i went home and i i just went to work um studying because i think if you start with studying really hard and be in class voice class breath technique all of those things i think are just so incredibly helpful and uh will only benefit you in the long run so um i agree with everything that jeff said as well he said that very eloquently um uh someone asked for you jeff your favorite line in the walking dead oh easy super easy i fucking love pudding <laughs> love it uh and then tagging off of that favorite lines from resident evil 3 i'm gonna go ahead and just jump in there and steal one of the best Do ones it. Please don't ever leave me in a cold, cruel, Carlos-less world. Carlos -less world. He went through that line so many times to, to not I like that one. trip on it. Cold, cruel, Carlos-less Car Carlos world. I like that one. I also like Nicole's I Know What a Radio Is. I always thought that was a good line. I like lines that make I like, like dialogue that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it, which sounds obvious, but like I just thought that line was so great because... Um, because she's such a capable person that it would be, it was like mansplaining about the radio. I just loved that the response was just, I know what a fucking radio is. It was, we, ta we talked about that on set. Steve actually made a comment recently to me. He was like, you, yeah, you guys were just like, we looked at each other and we're like, why is Jill not saying anything back? As we're like sitting there in this eye contact. And yeah. Like, no, he's mm, 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 finishing this scene and we're like, what? It just ends? We just go to gameplay? No, he just mansplained a radio. Let's. Yeah respond so thank you i also really uh, f uh our horror scopes very important uh is is that just like our 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 like uh, what's our sign like our sign i think that's our sign i'm an aquarius i'm a capricorn there you go now you know i don't know what that means but me either so it means something to you please <laughs> you guys let us know what's something you're really gonna miss from your experience making re3 well, I, already, I've I've been living in a in a cold, cruel Carlos Car, Carlos yeah, world. You, I haven't seen Jeff in a minute. Yeah, I always feel. I mean, for me, it's like I always miss the people. Yeah. I, I mean, and so like I, you know, I miss Nicole, I miss Neil, and Steve, and 
you know, Bill, I mean, you know, you just, you miss the crew, you miss hanging out. I mean, especially if you're fortunate enough to be on a set where there's a lot of camaraderie and everybody feels like family, then, you know, you know, this is, it's one of the funny things about like, you know, when you're working on projects is you spend these very intimate, concentrated periods of time with people in this yeah. like sort of very unique experience. And that world is all consuming. You're in that universe together for, you know, we would did it for, you know, a couple week chunks. When you're working on a film, you might be there for, you know, a month or two. Um, if you're doing a TV series, you're there for years. And then all of a sudden you go from in this intense, uh, intense community and then you're gone. Yep. So there's a lot. So like, you know, at the end of every project, you go from the highest high to like the lowest low because your universe literally changes as soon as they yell cut on the final day. Totally. Totally. That final cut too. You're, everyone's just like. It's always sad. Is that, is that it? Are we, are we done? Um, yeah, I, I, w I would have to say the same thing. It's, it's, it's always the people. It really is. Um, as much, you know, fun as it is to play and we love the work that we do, it's the people that make that work so fulfilling. Um, the cast that you work alongside and, and whatnot. And especially for us because um, we did a significant portion of this game in Japan. Like, we're so far. We're on such a different time zone than so many of the people that we had the chance to um, work with. So... That would definitely be that. Have we played Ari Resistance? No, but Jill is now um, available to play as. I know that happened. Well, she, did she come out in DLC? Oh, uh, in the in the Resistance, the the um, multiplayer. Um, no, no, but I mean, was it, was she already there? Was it a DLC? No, no, she yeah, they added her in. It, it is essentially, I guess, it, does that count as a DLC when they like add her in? I suppose it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, she she did. She's available now, and I did all of the voice work for that as well um so i'm only gonna play as her of course uh, but i have not played it yet i'll get to it though um all right lots of like inspiration questions people that inspire you jeff for voice acting or otherwise there's like seven of those people that inspire me yeah oh, yeah like God. who inspires you for the work that you do there's so um, maybe for carlos but also just in acting and generally speaking um yeah. i mean there's a lot they have a lot of a lot of influences and a lot of people whom inspire me, um, <clears throat> you know, in, in the voice. Oh my God, I don't know where to begin. Um, <laughs> I, feel the same I genuinely way. enjoy being a student of the work that I do. So I'm always looking at my peers and like, <clears throat> you know, looking at what they're doing, how they're doing it, what their process is. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm getting to work with a couple of people now whom, whom I, you know, I, I really respect and like, I mean, you know, Troy and Nolan and Travis and Laura. I mean, these are like, you know, amazingly talented people. Um, yep. You know, other actors that I just like really respect their work. I love J.K. Simmons. Um, Dude. You know, it's it, it's hard to narrow things down to like one or two or even 10 people because I'm constantly consuming this like world around me. So there's writers who might, you know, love their work. There's painters. And I think this is the cool thing. Let me just, let me wrap it up in this. I think it's one of the cool things about being an actor is your job is to consume as much things as possible and have a life experience that you can then contribute to whatever work you're doing. That's so, it. you know, I'm influenced by all sorts of things from the totally mundane to like the, the very obvious answer. Um, and no, no one inspiration is better than another. So if something inspires you, it's probably useful in your work as well. Totally, totally. Uh, I, I don't know if I could say it better. I, I feel the exact same way. Some of the people that he named were also major role models for the beginning of my career in, in video game world because of that first Shadow of War game that I hopped on. It had Troy was directing and we had Travis and Laura and just that amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That was that was like my that was my introduction, which was, yeah, yeah. Which was super cool. Like, I, I just, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, so they were like mentors to me because it was my first mocap experience and everything else. Um, so it meant a ton. Um, and then, oh God, there are so many, shit. do it. <laughs> there are so many people that, uh, what Jeff already said that you don't really know about necessarily. You don't think about, there are just so many people in so many different departments that make these games happen that make movies happen and tv happen so there are like people that inspire you that you know others may not know about or they may not have some huge online presence but they're just brilliant artists and i think there's something so 
wonderful about that and what I would encourage other people is like in any career, just keep, keep in mind the people that really bring a lot out of you or that inspire you um, in whatever work that they do. Because I think as an actor, we get inspired in, by everything because our job is to consume, like Jeff said. So um, everyone loves the glasses. They're, they're, oh. they're big on it. It's just because I can't fucking see. <laughs> Jesse wants to know if the uh, mocap suits are uncomfortable. And while you tell everyone about how comfortable or uncomfortable the mocap suits are, I'm going to look for another question. Sure, sure. Um, no, I, I mean, I actually don't find them uncomfortable. It's like if you've ever worn spandex or, or like a leotard or, or like a compression shirt, they kind of feel like that. They're a little bit thicker. The only time they get uncomfortable is if it's hot on set. If it's hot on set, then they're a little uncomfortable and like living in them for 13 hours. I think living in any piece of clothing for like 13 hours is, gets a little bit old, but, um, but no, I don't find the mocap suit uncomfortable at all. More uncomfortable than the suit is, the, is your head rig. Your, like your yeah. ATC mounts, which is like a, it's a small skull cap, um, hard shell, and then there's two cameras, depending on your setup, one or two cameras mounted on it. That can be a little bit uncomfortable wearing like a helmet the whole day. Yeah. Um, but other than that, no, mocap suits are fine. You wouldn't mind. Yeah. No, they're like, they're like wetsuits. And then yeah. same thing, the, the, the facial capture stuff can, can be uncomfortable and, and you look forward to breaks when it's like, good, I get to, it gets to come off for a minute. Cause there's a lot of pressure on your head, especially for being super active. <laughs> um, would we like to portray Jill and Carlos if they appear in future games? You best believe it. Of Always. course. Anytime. Definitely. Undoubtedly. We're both a call away. I speak for both of us on that. Um, someone wants to know if we wear tights underneath the mocap suits. Amazing. Uh, yes. Sometimes. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I do. Um, I think I wear compression gear underneath mine. It's just a preference. Some people don't. Um, it's really just always, it's always personal preference, but I like compression gear under mine. Uh, <laughs> There's my wife. She's amazing. I do love the tights. I like wearing the tights. She's <laughs> shit. You bless Hi, baby. it. Uh, Daniela, everyone, uh, go give her a follow. Jeff's amazing wife. They are like such a power duo. She brings most of the power. I just bring the duo. <laughs> There's two of them. Um, all right. Uh, favorite. Oh, fa do we have a pa favorite part of the game or like a favorite scene? Oh, um, what do you, what's your favorite? I'm curious, actually. What is I, your favorite? Mine? Personally? yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of parts. I really liked, though, um, especially in the in the final version. And again, I haven't watched straight through. I've watched a ton of pieces. Um, I, I actually really like some of those final moments between Carlos and Nikolai and Jill. Um, mm -hmm. And I liked shooting those as well. I thought that yeah. was really just kind of when it all comes together. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Carlos needs a little help, finally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think that might be one of my favorites too. I kind of like the end. It's a small moment. It's just a very small moment. Yeah. But uh, but but right before, well, I don't want to spoil anything. Right before the game sort of climaxes at the very very end. There you the, go. The nice little moment between Carlos and Jill is very yeah. intense, and most of it's unspoken. But for me, I, I really like that moment. Yeah, a lot of the unspoken moments. I'm I'm actually. I'm so incredibly um, impressed to watch how the technology continues to improve and really capture some of those moments that in performance mm -hmm. you feel really strongly about. I'm sure yeah. you've experienced this, Jeff, where like in the past a scene feels really, you know, full of weight and then you watch the final product and sometimes it's there and sometimes you're like, wow, like so much gets lost in, you yeah. know, animation, but it's, con it's <clears throat> like evolved so much um, technologically that it's really satisfying to, yeah. Um, to watch some of these scenes and be like, oh, that moment played, like it really worked. Yep. Um, and that's satisfying just from an actor's perspective. Yeah, Someone yeah. wants to know kind of in, in our Corona time, do we both have home studios? Um, uh, basically. Do you, wanna, do you wanna know about what, like, what my home studio setup is? Yeah, is like you know, if we have home studios. Oh yeah, yeah, I do have a home studio. Um, um, I, I kind of always feel like it's a work in progress. I'm always like adding and taking away, but yeah, I have, I have a home studio with, um, I mean, I don't know how technical you want me to get, but it's, um, it's you know, sound paneled out and, and acoustic foam and yep. um, it's all built out. And then I have my, um, my audio interface in there and my laptop and I run a Sennheiser 416. Um, Love it. So, yeah. Yep. 
Um, I uh, also have a home studio and especially because of being quarantined, I've had the opportunity to update yeah. my home studio. So I've been adding a lot to it. And I actually have a bunch of stuff um, that's coming this weekend. I'm super excited about um, to just kind of work on uh, better sound from Poppy. Give me, give me dog. <laughs> give me dog. Give me doggo. That's my boy. Oh my goodness. Um, yes. So we both uh we have to use them constantly for for voiceover auditions and um sometimes jobs in uh the quarantine world yeah i did see i did see one question that i wanted to answer just because it's one of my favorite yeah. questions and I actually get asked it a lot someone asked me if i actually love pudding and i forgot who who, who said it uh yes and my wife can verify it is one of my favorite desserts <laughs> so I'm so glad that Jeff that likes that. pudding. Jeff, Jeff would be someone who's a put, who's a pudding person. Delicious. Um, I think you can probably scroll a little bit and help me out here, because um, more questions are coming in the comments than they are. Okay. Since you're wearing your sexy glasses. Yeah, I can I can read now. Put it. I'll, I'll <laughs> put try to scroll work. back. Um, uh, lots of people are asking if Jill and Carlos are dating, and all I can say is absolutely no comment. Yeah, I mean, I think like if you think they're dating, then maybe they are. Maybe if you don't are. think they're dating, maybe they're not. Uh, Mr. Who has time to date when you're getting chased by zombies, though? Yeah, I was like, this is survival apocalypse, guys. Like... guys we're talking about survival here. <laughs> Someone said, did we know that they defeated the Nemesis boss battle with a knife? I didn't even know that was possible, so I agree with you. That's insane. Was, wait, what was, it? what was the statement? So apparently a YouTuber was able to defeat the final Nemesis with a, with a knife. Oh. With just a knife instead of the crazy, I don't, I, I didn't know that's Bad possible. Ass. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I'm gonna look that up. Can I give you pudding on Animal Crossing? Jeff, do you have Animal Crossing? You I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make everybody upset right now. What's Animal Crossing? Ooh! All right, I got you. <clears throat> Is everybody mad? No, I don't think so. Is it a mobile game? No, it's a Switch. It, well, it's it, so Animal Crossing is actually oh, it's a Switch. Cooler, it's an older game, but it's um, originally it's an older game. They just came out with a new one called New Horizons. Um, and it is like the most quaint. Do you know Stardew Valley? Stardew, yeah. You know the little mobile, that is a mobile game. Yeah. Like the mobile game where you like farm and stuff. So it's like a more- You showed me Stardew Valley in, in, in Japan. Me. I did. Yeah, yeah, okay. I kind of yeah. remember. Yeah, okay. So Animal Crossing is like a far more advanced game in the same genre okay. of just like, it's relaxed. You're on an island. You have your own island. You're like making this island. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of young people play, but also you could be any age and enjoy Animal Crossing. Um, so Animal Crossing, it's just like crazy right now because everyone's sort of in. It came out also at the right time, like building their islands. Yeah. So it's a game that you play on Switch and you can like go to people's islands and stuff like that. Gotcha. It's kind of Simsy, but with little, little characters. Teeny so I little guess animal characters. So I guess the answer to the question is: if I played Animal Crossing, I would gladly accept pudding. Yes. <laughs> gladly. Uh, we were asked um, our favorite colors. Color? Mm. Oh, I have two, but um, black is my favorite color. Just like your heart. I know. Well, right, what's yours? Purple. Okay. Really? Very yeah. royal. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, come on, bougie. of course. Um, definitely purple. I I also can get in there with like a little periwinkle, a little a little blue. Wow, purple. periwinkle. Get in there with it. Got to do it, you know. Okay. Um, yes, I do have a video game collection. I just saw that on the thing. Yeah, good. I do. I'm a hardcore gamer. Um, I love games. I always have. I always will. Don't ever take them away from me. He's also never not playing games at some level. Just in his head or on his phone. Yeah. Jeff just plays games. I love games. games. Yeah. I love games. Um, like, I think one of the most impressive things that I've seen as someone who's just spent a, 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 an extended period of time around the amazing Jeff Shine is uh, he does a really good job of like hearing everything that's happening, but being like totally immersed in like a, a mobile game on breaks or like when we're like traveling or something. You know who's um, got a good, who, who's, who's a big gamer also, and especially mobile is Steve. Yeah. He's like, he, he like, he started introducing me to um, Apple's gaming store, which is, or Apple's Arcade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get, Steve I need to get Steve Knievely, by the way, it was our amazing cinematics director. Um, and he's a total badass. So he, was the he man. did all of the direction. Um, we should try to do something with Steve where like people can meet him because he's dope. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. Let's get him on. He's, He's in incredible. Japan. Um, so we have to pick a strange time, but I'm sure something would work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he also gave me a ton of um, Switch game recommendations. Oh, right on. I'm an yeah. Xbox guy. Are you Xbox or PlayStation? PS4. Okay, that's fine. It's just what I have. Um, it was actually like I think a, with next gen, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do both, I think. Yeah. It'd be hard not to. I mean, you're, you know, you're in the video game industry. You got to have both. Mm -hmm. You got to have both. I'll ask one because I'm, I'm kind of catching up now. I'm seeing these questions on how to like, do you have any artistic skills, Nicole? Artistic skills? Like yes. drawing? I don't, I, um, whatever you think art means. I don't want to admit it. Well, let me start at the beginning. Um, I, do, I, well, I don't know if there's skills, but I definitely do enjoy um, sketching and I have an iPad Pro and so I love spending time in Procreate. I know there's lots of fun people that make fan art in Procreate and stuff like that. So I spend time um, in Procreate sketching. Um, and then I also just, I love to sing. I love to dance, physical movement. Um, and then I'm a huge photography person. So I think a, most of my artistic outbursts come out in shutterbug um moments because they take a lot of photos um of people jeff are you an artist um i wish i could draw if i could pick an art if i could pick a form of art that i that i would like aspire to be better at would be um drawing because i'm obsessed with like comic book art and, and fan art and things like that i just no one knows i'm obsessed with it i always ask for like did anybody draw anything recently that i can see because i'm i'm I'll tag you in more, I promise. Yeah. There's more. Uh, um, <laughs> but I'm pretty musically inclined. I used to play the piano a lot. Um, I'm learning the drums. So and that and that's so that feels artistic to me. Yeah, I would I would agree with that big time. Um uh Jay's got a, a crazy uh like logic set up recently and he's been scoring a short film that he directed here. So he's got like this really fun musical setup that's happening right now and I mm -hmm. keep going in there and um, oh. And like playing. I see one user. I feel like there's. I feel like there's a young lady in the chat who drew something for us that you and I posted. Ooh, really? Is is it? I'm gonna pronounce the name wrong. Let me scroll. But I. Think oh, oh no, G G Gilan Gilan Musa. Yeah, she's yeah. an amazing artist. Amazing artist. So let's just shout yeah. out her real quick because she drew one, she drew something that I really really liked. Dude, yeah. That, anyway, thank uh, you for doing that. That was incredible. You're very, very talented. Very talented. Definitely go check it out. And also, if there's any other amazing um, artists on right now, please make sure you also tag Jeff in any fan art. Um, because he, he loves seeing it. And otherwise, I'm the one that's going in there commenting and be like, Jeff, look at this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, follow Jilin. She's very talented. Super talented. <clears throat> um, we have a whole list of people you should follow. Uh, a favorite artist that you're listening to? What kind of music, Jeff? Um, I'm listening to my my dog over there has to pee. Uh, what am I listening to right now? I'm listening to. Okay, here we go. The War on Drugs is one of my favorite bands. I'm listening to them a lot right now. Um, I'm listening to Churches, and it, it depends. Like, is it my, is it what I'm listening to at the gym? What am I listening to when I'm just hanging out at home? Um, I love music, so there's always like something playing. But I would say, like, if I gotta like, keep it simple and easy, check out the War on Drugs. I think you'll like them a lot. Also, uh, Jalen just said she's gonna do more art for us, and it cre uh, caused me to have like a, a rush of endorphins in, in my brain of happiness. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I, uh, I amazing. It. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously. Um, <laughs> I listen to all kinds of stuff. I rely on uh, musically inclined um, people around me as someone who loves music. And also I kind of just listen to any, I know so many songs and I don't always know the artists, which is a shame. Um, so I've also listened to churches. I'm a, I'm a big musical theater person too. So I love like, uh, oh, it's really bright. Oh, there we go. Um, I love Hamilton and and Hades Town and some of the newer musicals that are out there kicking it. So that's just because I'm a musical theater brat. Do you guys watch any anime? Uh, yeah, I've watched. Uh, I've watched. I've watched. I watch a lot of my friends' shows. So like stuff that I know people are in. Mm -hmm. um, I watch that. Um, probably more than I just go on and go, oh, what, you know, what anime am I watching? It also is really, I, I like the animes that make you feel really quaint, like things that you can just kind of like relax to. 
yeah um, and feel like oh the world is so pretty um i think it's really really beautiful did you hear the re3 song made with your voices from the game no i did not but i'd be curious to see that i might have seen half a second of this if it was on twitter but i don't know if i did so feel free to retag us um and we'll go we'll go take a look do you listen to taylor swift i'm gonna try we'll try to like we're, we're gonna try to fire these out we're gonna try to get to almost everything do you Love listen it. to taylor swift phone, like the uh, speed round oh speed round uh like if she comes on but i don't seek it out taylor swift's great i'll listen to taylor swift um uh, what do i think about fan what do you think about fan fiction nicole I, I don't know if I have any thoughts on fan fiction because this is probably my first real introduction to fan fiction that I'm directly more involved in. Uh, but I think there are a lot of people that are very talented out there that have a lot of great understanding of story and a lot of love of characters. So I hear that there's very good fan fiction. I like I'm excited to read some of it. Yeah, fan fiction is great. If you have, if you have part of it, I mean, I, I like the idea of like people being able to take stories they love and adding to it in whatever way they feel. I mean, it's like, tell your story. If you have a story to tell, tell it. Um, first console you owned, go. First console? Uh, yeah. I think my first was Nintendo, straight up NES. Oh, nice. Um, I, uh, I, I think I, I had a, I had a, I had a, I had a, I had, I had a Nintendo as well. I, I can't remember if I did, I know I had a Game Boy at some point and I had a DS, so I'm a little bit like later, but, um, also Nintendo. I like this. I what that. are you having for dinner tonight? And are you cooking it? Ugh. Well, yeah, we're stuck inside and we've been trying to cook at home a lot. Uh, my go-to back and forth has been very good ramen. We make very good ramen at my house. Uh -huh. um, and then we also make sushi rice and I have some sashimi nice. ready to go on that rice. Um, so probably homemade sushi. I've also been baking cookies. So sometimes dinner is nice. just cookies because health. Nice. I'm jealous. Um, what are you having for dinner tonight? Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to have, but I think I'm going to have, I think I'm going to have ground bison and, um, broccoli and a little bit of rice. Uh, yum. Liz, Liz, Zach, here's, here's end of speed round. I also think that the lives of French of, officially like go off in about eight minutes. Cause I think they're only allowed to be like an hour long. So we have about eight minutes before this one ends, but that's okay. Is it uh, weird hearing your uh, voice uh, in from a different person in video games? So like your character? Uh, I don't know that it's weird. I don't know that it's any more weird than seeing yourself like on a show or in a film or something. I think it's, um, you know, I don't know. I guess, I guess when, I first, when I first started working, I, I, I found it like, I guess it was more exciting than anything. Um, but no, I don't find it like too weird. I try not to like, think about it too much because you get too I get too analytical yeah 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 I don't think it's weird either I actually love uh when we do facial capture stuff I love looking at the final products and mostly at other people that I've worked with and being like I see so much of Jeff and Carlos it, like it like looks like Jeff because it's all of his mannerisms in some way and like Neil's Nikolai um even though the the original characters are like based off of like a scan of a model or like the development team like tweaking or creating something like they morph so much in so many ways with the technology I, I actually love kind of seeing um how it ends up looking really natural or how I can look at like this animated character and be like Jeff that like that looks just like you but it, mm -hmm. it's not that's so strange um so I I think it's really fun actually um how did you have you seen Parasite yes I haven't yet I will, though. In fact, I think I'm going to watch it this week. I've been planning on watching it. Boy, get on that. It's great. Yeah, um, how did you find out you would play Carlos or Jill? Probably an email or a call. How um, did we find out when we got it? Yeah. Phone call. My, my agent called me. I think, I think my agent forwarded me an email and then called me, and I might have seen it. I think I saw it in the email first. I did, mm -hmm. and then she called me, and she was like, da, da, da. I was like, no way. Uh, it, was a, it was a very, very good day. We went out and got a cookie and celebrated. Just, Would you oh, agree? Nicole, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate yeah. that. Would you agree that Bitch Can't Even Swim is the most iconic line? I, I don't know if I would agree it's the most iconic line, but it is a stellar line, and I love how much people are enjoying it, because truly, Bitch Can't Even Swim. Uh, not, yay, can you? There's, there's, they're flying by, Jeff. This is the last, this is the Hashtag last six minutes. Hobby okay, well, go ahead. We got the last couple minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for spending time with us. You're so welcome. Thank you guys for spending time with us. Genuinely. You guys are amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. I hope it, I hope it helped. I hope it broke, broke, broke up some of the day. Totally. Let's pick one more question and then we'll say our goodbyes. I'm going to the question like area really fast. Um, let me see if I can, oh man, picking a last one is, is, mm -hmm. is rough. Okay, this one's just sweet. How did we feel when we first saw the final product? Oh, please. Yeah, um, I think just so excited, like everyone else. The first time the trailer drops or the first time I'm, I'm sitting there like every other Resident Evil fan, just being like, oh my gosh, it's here, it's happening. Um, so for me, it just was like, <laughs> wow, super cool. I'm gonna actually chill about it because I am, um, a badass, but also I was nerding out. I it was I was stoked. Yeah, I think it's always it's always exciting when something you've been working on for so long that you couldn't talk about with anybody. Yeah, um, you know, finally other people get to like see it and consume it. It's you know, there's there's nerves, there's excitement. You hope people enjoy it. You know, you, you put a lot of hard work and heart into it. And I think this was a labor of love for all of us. So I, I know we all you know felt very personal about it, but um, yeah. it was exciting, super exciting. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for, for being here, coming guys. on and hanging out. It really is such a joy to, to be excited with you. Yeah. Jeff, thanks for, for braving the Instagram live waters. Thank you, Nicole. And jumping on here. Like for helping me out. Social media master. Well, thanks for and helping me out. I appreciate it. Keep, uh, keep tagging us in your stuff, guys. We can't, we love seriously we text each other all the time like did you see this did you yeah. see that like we we love the fan art and the and uh just the awesome comments keep playing keep surviving raccoon city yeah and uh we'll we'll see you guys again soon on social media and when the world heals maybe at a con yeah thanks guys thank you so much for being here really appreciate you guys thanks for your time we will uh definitely see you guys soon and thank you to nicole for hosting this thing <laughs> And uh, stay course. safe, guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. We'll see you guys soon. Totally. Lots of love.